Even if what Van and the White House are saying is all true, the scare tactics have not worked. Check okay, let me out. Ask you, before you go on. Well, no, let me finish my true? question. Let's talk about the, the facts. You're saying that. No, no, no. Not let true. me finish my question, Bill. I want you to take a look at this polling. Um, only about 36 percent of Americans think global warming is a serious threat to our way of life. Now, again, let me let me pause it. Everything that Van and the White House have said is true. However. The scare tactics have not worked, and don't you need public consensus to move the needle on this? So how do you want to get public consensus? By saying that it's not happening, that it's not serious, that shorelines aren't flooding, that we're no, not... No, I want you to advise the, advise the oh, politicians. Oh, advise the politicians. Because they're not... Whatever they're doing, whatever Van is doing to scare the public is not changing Inform public opinion. Inform the public, but go right ahead. <laughs> tell us, so tell us how to use the science to actually change public consensus. Well, you get the message out that this is serious business. And, you know, if you live in uh, Oklahoma where tornadoes have wiped your town out a couple times, if you, and you, you chose Alaska, which is remote generally, but when you start, you remember Hurricane Sandy? Mm -hmm. The bottom half of Manhattan was flooded. Yeah. The economic effect of that alone is enormous, let alone the rebuilding infrastructure and so on. And we're in the developed world where people can get on the highway and drive. You know, when you say moving a highway four feet, it doesn't sound like very much, but you're talking about millions of tons of road that have to be lifted, and that energy has to come from somewhere, and that's just the start of things. Uh, well, and and so uh, when we start having crop failures and the drought that's in California continues. Essentially, whenever I'm in a conversation, or even whenever I'm writing, I want to make sure that three things happen that three ideas, three pieces of the framework get established, and that's the pro-human flourishing piece, the even-handed piece, and the precise piece. So if I'm in a discussion with somebody and some issue comes up, like the Paris Climate Accords, I'll, I, wanna get, I don't want to jump into the facts, uh, because how do we even know what facts to talk about or how to talk about them? I want to ask first, hey, would you agree that our goal here is we want the energy policy that's best for human beings now and in the future? And what I find is almost everyone will agree. Some people won't. But then if they don't agree that the goal is the best policy for human beings, you can't just proceed and jump into the facts. You need to challenge them. And if they're not willing to value human life, then you need to leave. I mean, when people really won't value human life, I just say, well, you know what? If you don't value human life, then you should absolutely oppose fossil fuels, because you'll get a lot of people killed. And then they don't usually like that. Uh, but, and sometimes they then come back. So that's one thing that has to happen. Another thing that has to happen is we have to agree to be even-handed. Would you agree that to determine the best policy, we need to look at both the potential positives and negatives? And when you ask that question, 100% of people agree. I've never had anyone who said, I'm only going to look at the positives or I'm only going to look at the negatives. And yet, if you don't ask that question, that's what people do all the time. They're super, super biased. So by making the issue of framework explicit, you can get people to think way better than they would if you didn't. And the same thing is true with precision. If I say, hey, would you, do you agree that we need to be as precise as possible? For instance, when we talk about sea level rise, we have to be clear, do we mean two feet in 100 years, like the UN says, or 20 feet in 30 years, like Al Gore says? We have to be precise. And they'll say, of course. But if you didn't establish that framework, they would never do it on their own. So once you establish the framework, whether it's in conversation or in your writing, then people process the facts in a much better way. And I think the inevitable conclusion, once you start looking at the facts from the right framework, from a human flourishing-based framework, is overall that freeing fossil fuel use instead of restricting it is going to give billions more people access to cheap, plentiful, reliable energy. Continues the economic cost. Yeah, well, you can look at these it. things, and, and you can look at the climate realities. And even this NCA report says that the, the trend on tornadoes is uncertain. The IPCC report so says that the so trend on hurricanes is okay. uncertain. We're in the longest hurricane drought. I'm not. I'm not a denier. I'm not a skeptic. What I'm saying is the climate is changing. Yes, man-made emissions are in some part to that, but we haven't seen these extreme weather event trends. The observed data doesn't prove that. Well, so I More importantly so, is the, okay. the policy prescriptions, these greenhouse gas regulations coming down, uh, prohibiting building new coal-fired power plants, is just going to make us less equipped, less economically prosperous to handle these problems, uh, whether they're you know, more frequent and more So let's just not. start with we don't agree on the facts. right? So this, this third report came out saying it's very serious. You say no. 
right? That's the, there's the essence of the problem, Missy. E. Well, the science, the, the researchers say yes. You not all the researchers, and again, hope. even the IPCC says that there's no uh, frequency or intensity when it comes to hurri hurricanes. So, okay, hurricane, so, schmurricane, if I may. This one the says about tornadoes. Getting, it's the same thing. Yeah, sea level is rising, getting, although it's it's retracted. It, it's um, increasing at a slower rate over the past few years. We've had Arctic okay. ice globally you're increasing. Data. I think no, not important. not absolutely. Why did this all no, work come out? And, and but like, Bill, isn't yeah. it a problem when science guys attempt to bully other people? I mean, Nick well, here had to say, me, "I'm not a denier." He had to get it up. I'm not a denier because really. The, the science group has tried to shame anyone who dares question this. Okay. And the point I'm why trying that, to make is, is it's not working with the public. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel and consider donating to the Heartland Institute to support more vibrant free markets, greater individual liberty, and more videos like this one.